All right, let's do this. I always have told uh, students that I used to teach that, hey, if you ever had a problem with something, I am there for you, and I'm going to answer a question if I can. And, uh, well, I was just in the midst of uh, working on a Christmas gift uh, for my little niece, Maddie, and uh, it turns out I was uh, going to make a... I, I thought I had bought a motor, and it turns out I bought a motor kit, which means I have to build everything uh, from parts, Right on. Yeah, yeah, and wait, wait, what? And and wanting to get my mind off of that, uh, and being a little frustrated with it, I happened to get a uh, email from one of my students uh, from last year, and I was so happy to get the thing because basically that means I can, uh, you know, do something else other than work on that motor. And the basic question was, uh, how do I tell uh, what kind of reaction a chemical reaction is if I'm just given the beginning? In other words, just the reactants. Can I tell what kind of reaction that is? And secondly, how do I, I, I think part of the question was also how do I balance the equation? I want to try to answer both of those more the first answer. But along the way, maybe we'll talk a little bit about balancing equations. And uh, maybe that'll help you out. So I figured I why not? Let's just take out the old sketch pad and the microphone and let's make a little video because I think this would be easier than writing some long email. So uh, let's do this. So we're talking to uh, basically a Science 10 student here. So this is for Science 10, just in case you're curious and should cover anything you might be doing at this time in terms of the types of reaction, how to recognize them. And uh, let's go back. Um, if you might recall that with Science 9, I did actually have a little uh, thing about this already. And if you look it up on my playlist, there is one called Science 9 Questions for Understanding Chemical Reactions. And in that, I would have shown this diagram and the four basic types of chemical reactions. Now, if you look back on the email that was sent, there is a mention of the six different reactions. So this uh, thing that I got here is now slightly revised. So what I'm going to do here is that we're going to talk about these four types. Uh, basically, we have here where two things come together, and we're going to call that, uh, well, let's actually just call them what they are. We have synthesis, and then I have one thing that uh, splits apart, and we will call that decomposition whoops okay well you know how I make videos I don't try that hard okay and then I've got uh, some molecule made up of two parts that is uh, being added with another single thing and I call this a single replacement replacement and then I've got a situation where I have a uh, molecule made up of two parts added to a molecule that is also made of two parts. And this will be called a, yes, you guessed it, double replacement. And this is our basic four types. But as it was mentioned in the email, there are six. So I'm going to add a little something here. I'm going to say, okay, there are single replacements, but they're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a little star here. And then with a double replacement, I'm going to put a little star here. Yeah. Because there are, for each of the single and double replacements, there is also a special case for each one. There's a special case for a single replacement and a special case for a double replacement. And I will be getting into that uh, shortly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these with an example. And we'll just look at it and we'll talk about what is special about each particular type uh, and how to spot them so without further ado let's just let's just jump into it okay so I'm gonna block off one side so I don't see the the entire thing and I'm gonna pop up the first thing so the first thing looks like this okay uh, what do I got so in every case here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be looking at only the left side of the chemical reaction and we're going to try to say okay what what can I tell from this what can, what can I decide is going to happen? So this immediately, let's just, uh, can I pop back to the other thing? Oh, no, I can't. Okay, don't worry. What do I got? I have, let's just, just 
there there is one thing <laughs> this is so this is going to be a mr gill version of things i'm going to use simple language here uh, but i think it's better to talk about it this way just like let's get to the point here and the point is is that i got one thing and there is only one type of reaction that starts with one thing so if i see this you automatically know that you're dealing with something that is probably going to have to break down into extra parts so let's just unveil here boom if I have one thing, it is going to, so what do I have? I have something that is, uh, let's say it's an AB. It's made of, it, it is one thing, but it is made up of, uh, let's say, two parts. And then the two parts are going to split up into its A and B parts. So what do we call this? We call this my happy, happy decomposition. So automatically, I know what I'm going to be doing is this must be splitting into parts. What are the parts going to be? Well, I, I, this in this case, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to say, well, one of the bars has to be hydrogen. The other one has to be oxygen. There is no other way this can work. Uh, now, notice a few things. Along the way, you do have to add some other stuff that you know about this stuff. I got hydrogen peroxide here. That This is what this happens to be. Um, and when it breaks into a hydrogen, you would have to know, well, wait a minute. Hydrogen is naturally, naturally a gas on its own when it's on its own and also happens to be one of the uh, non-metals that form diatomic molecules so automatically i know that when i write it i can't just say h now i don't know how to tell you this but you're just going to have to memorize there's a few on the periodic table there's not a lot of them but there's a few that will automatically do this and lo and behold uh, check it out. Oxygen is also one of them. Uh, there's a few others. Uh, nitrogen, for example. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole list. Look it up. Do some studying. Okay, so I automatically know that when I write this down, I, it has to be an H2. It will be a molecule where the hydrogen is bonding covalently, ooh, covalently with uh, another hydrogen like that. Um, I guess I shouldn't have drawn it like this. Let's draw a proper Lewis diagram. Boop. And then this one's going boop. And they share. Oh, we're going to share. That's so nice. And then they, they're they covalently bonded together. And this is how hydrogen naturally works. So there is a little bit of thinking involved in saying, okay, wait a minute. Uh, i, I got to think about what hydrogen is when it's on its own. And, um, oh, we didn't talk about this, did we? Look at all these little things. I assume that your teacher has started to point these things out to you. So notice that with every single um, molecule that I'm dealing with in a chemical equation, we're going to get used to talking about what state it's in. Uh, this becomes really important after a while. Uh, do I put an ionic compound in some water? Is it, uh, is it going in some water and is it therefore automatically disassociating into its separate ions? Ooh, like salt. Remember when we talked about salt? salt going into water and suddenly it's no longer NaCl but it's going to break into its Na plus and Cl minus ions. So we, we want to point out when that happens. So the, the different states we might have would be liquid, I could have a solid, I could have a gas, but I could also, like I said, put it into water and it just simply disassociates. Um, I'm saying that word wrong. I'm saying disassociate. It's dissociates. I always get it wrong it dissociates into water and in that case it is what's known as aqueous so i just mean that it's in water it's been flung into water is aqueous so these are the four possible things i might say uh, beside a molecule to point out what it is because i know that for example hydrogen naturally is going to be a gas oxygen will naturally be a gas hydrogen peroxide is naturally a liquid um i don't know if your teacher is going to want you to know these things uh, but after a while, this, this kind of comes down to practice and you just start noticing uh, what stuff is going to be normally. So that's decomposition. And notice, the only thing I needed to notice to tell it from all the other ones is that there's one thing at the beginning. So I started off like that. I had my little one thing over here. And I knew automatically from that that this must be my decomposition reaction. And, I'm, and, and that's pretty much all. That's the only thing you need to know about that one. So let's take it away because it's boring. Okay. Now, what's next? Well, what if I have 
two single things. Two single things. So now I've got uh, a one one single thing. I should say element, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm dumb. One single thing <laughs> and another single thing. <laughs> Another single thing. We Okay. Another single thing. If I have that, what's going on? Well, there is no other thing this can do except combine. So once again, just like decomposition, I know automatically that since I have one single thing and another single thing, that I will automatically have a a sort of a synthesis of the two a synthesis of both together um, I'm I got a AG I got a metal I got a non-metal this is going to be on a bond so when I do it what's gonna happen well you're gonna have to get your periodic table out you're gonna have to check out what happens but let's just look Ooh, there we go AGO so I'm gonna have it one AGO eight sorry one AG or rather silver and one oxygen they're going to combine i'm going to get a solid out of it nice but then uh what else do i need to say about this no that's pretty obvious synthesis is really obvious one single thing and another single thing they will combine it is a synthesis um i mean i don't know how often you use that word in everyday language but synthesis basically means i am synthesizing i'm i'm combining stuff together so uh now this brings up the balancing issue because we have to talk about balancing it so let's let's balance this now this one's kind of obvious but but let's go over uh mr gale's balancing rules now i don't have a lot of special rules for how to balance equations i really think it's as simple as what i'm showing here this is the order in which you should do it so first and and by doing stuff i mean Figure out that the numbers on both sides are the same. Okay? So, first thing you do, do the stuff that's not hydrogen or oxygen first. Then, do hydrogen. Then, do oxygen last. That's it. That's all my rules. It is absolutely everything I got for you. So, we go back to this thing. Let's check it out. Um, let me pop up a layer. So, let me see. I'll start with my... Well, silver is not... Uh, it is not my uh, hydrogen or oxygen. So I'll start with that. Always metals first. Yeah. So here we go. AG. One AG. Looks good. Okay. Then I move on to my hydrogens. No hydrogens. Then I move on to my oxygens. Here we are. I got two here. I got two. I got one here. Okay. That means I need two. Now the oxygens are balanced. But when I doubled this up, I doubled my silver, which means, oh, I got to come over here. And double up my silver and hooray i'm balanced that was easy that was actually super easy oh my god okay let's just get rid of that now so that is decomposition now we're getting to things that are going to be like maybe a little weirder but once again i want you i want to point out let's 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 just point this out everything we've been doing so far is exactly like the diagram that i was showing at the very beginning so for example um i had uh synthesis and let's just go back for a minute and look at that. Synthesis is basically where I have one. Uh, sorry, that what did I just show you? I didn't show you synthesis. H that's decomposition. I am so sorry. So I had one thing. The one thing must have two parts to it. In other words, probably two ions uh, ionically bonded. Well, it doesn't have to be, but um, that is generally what you're going to see happen. That is more common. And then they're going to break apart into two things. Great. And then synthesis, like I said, two single things that will combine to form one thing. Okay, so that's kind of obvious. But now what do we got? Let's get into things that are a little more complicated. And now what do I got? Now, you are tempted uh, to say that I have three things here. But you got to keep your eye out for these things because we talked about this last year in grade 9. Is that really what I have here is I have um, a a what should i say a compound of two things so in this case i've got um a a metal 
uh, that this would be my uh, my positive ion. And then I've actually got this is another thing which is my uh, negative ion. And I'm so I'm looking at NO3. So so what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, be on the lookout for what polyatomic ions. Be on the lookout for them. They're all over the place, and they're used a lot. So I got to be looking because that's not two things here. This is actually one thing, and NO3 is one thing. And if you look up on your chart, you're going to be able to find that. Um, then what do I got over here? I have a uh, plus a compound that is also made up of two things. So I'm looking for this. That's all I'm looking. So I, I got an Na. Oh, that is a plus E plus thing. And I got iodine. Ah, that's the negative thing. So, ah, I see what's going on here. What's going to happen? Well, it also becomes obvious how uh, what's going to happen next because I have an AB. Right? And then I'm doing a compound that has a CD. And I recognize that. I go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is two double things. This is going to be a double replacement. You thought I was going to do single, didn't you? No, I jumped right to double replacement. Whoops. Whoa. So here I have a double replacement. I recognize it by having a compound of two things plus a compound of two things. And so what's going to happen? Well, they're going to replace each other. But it's obvious which ones are going to have to replace. I can't have, for example, INO3 because those are both the negatives. So only I must still end up with a positive, negative, positive, negative. So let's just unveil it. La, 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 la. So as you can see, what's going to happen, the silver will have to bond with the iodine on this side, and the NO3 is going to have to combine with the sodium. So here I go. I'm just switching everything up. That's all that's going to happen. Now what's nice about this is that when you're trying to balance the equations, many times what you got is you, you can almost sort of treat the NO3 as one thing. Right, uh, you don't necessarily have to go. Okay, I got to look at the N's, then I got to look at the O's. You can sort of say, oh, I got one of the NO3s here, and I got one of the NO3s over here, and that might make it a little faster when you're trying to balance. Uh, I don't have to balance this one, do I? I got one iodine, one iodine, one silver, one silver. What do I got here? Na, Na, nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, three, oxygen, three. Everything's fine. This is a pretty boring uh, balancing. I should have done a better one, shouldn't I? So, this is a double replacement. Um, the only thing, look out for the polyatomic ions. This is kind of um, one thing that might uh, mess you up. But, uh, you'll notice that when I started this off, I did say that with double replacement, there is a special case that we want to look for. We want to look for this. And this is basically um, the special case is going to be where I take an acid and I'm going to take a base. And this is going to make something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> plus <laughs> water. Plus water. Um, this is. And so what's going to happen is that the acid and base combine. I've got one with a, a very low pH. This is like low pH level. Very acidy. Of course, it's an acid. That's why it's called that. And this is going to be very high pH. Right? And they're going to combine and combine to... I shouldn't put the end there. I'm going to put it down here. It will neutralize um, each other. It will basically bring ourselves out into something where the pH is right smack dab in the middle with a pH 7. So we call this a neutralization. Sometimes an acid-base reaction. Uh, it depends upon what your teacher is using. Uh, so, so once again, sometimes people will say acid base. Sometimes people will say neutralization. But in any case, this is a special case of the double replacement. It will look like a double replacement. So how do you know that you're dealing with the special case? Well, you have to be able to spot that you're dealing with acids and bases. So for a moment, let's take a little, little, little deep dive into what acid and bases are all about. Now, you're going to hear um, a version of what acid and bases are. You're going to hear, uh, for example, you're going to say, oh, um, let's just take that away. You're going to hear, oh, acids uh, have 
H in them. In other words, uh, it's it, it would be a compound where hydrogen is attached to something else. For example, let's just have an example here. Hydrochloric acid is an H and Cl. And uh, this is a really good uh, way of looking at it. You'll also hear that bases all have OHs in them. I might have even said that last year. Um, for example, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And you can see where the water is going to come from because you can tell that the OH and the H, they're going to, wee, they're going to, they're going to combine and I'm going to get my water. That's awesome. That's what I'm going to get. And then I can see where the, remember when I said something's going to happen, well, there's the CL and the Na is going to make NaCl. I'm going to get some sort of combination of the two. So is this really the best definition of an acid and base? Well, sort of, but there's some things that don't quite work in this situation. For example, uh, NH3 um, is a base. This is a base, but where's the OH? There is no OH. So I'm going to have some situations where I have to be a little careful about what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm going to give you um, a better version of what acids and bases are. It's known as the brownsted lowry theory of acids and bases. And basically, let's look at it. An acid is a substance from which a proton, an H plus ion, can be removed. So that kind of makes sense with what we were saying before, right? Where we were saying, well, that's, that's, that's great. I got an HCl that should, that would perfectly fit what I'm talking about. And pretty much this works fine uh, for acids. Acids are pretty easy to spot. You've got an H added to something else. H with another ion. But a base, the better way, this is the better way of thinking about it. A base is a substance that can be, rem that can remove a proton from an acid. In other words, it's going to react with an acid and remove that hydrogen ion. So that's a little different than just saying, oh, they have OHs. And, and the main reason behind that is because we do have exceptions uh, for bases, such as NH3, where we have uh, what looks like not a base because we're staring around looking for OHs, and, and sometimes we don't. So um, what's this look like? Well, first off, I have something like this, and I'm going to say, oh, oh, I got, I got two things. I got two things. These, this definitely looks like a double replacement. But then I go, ah, ah. So every, so every time, every time you get a double replacement, double, I'm just going to say rep, replacement reaction, uh, reaction, check for, acids and bases okay so you just got to check that's all you got to do so this is the clue as soon as you notice that you're working with a double replacement because you've recognized that you've got a one compound with two things and another compound with two things you go perfect double replacement go wait a minute wait a minute am i dealing with an acid because this sure looks like an acid there's my h plus ion and do i have a base uh-huh, which is normally where you're going to see the OH, but once again, might not be. Be a little careful about that one. Is it something that could react with the acid and then balance? Would I still be able to get um, water out of this? So there better be some oxygen and hydrogen involved. So what happens? What happens? Well, first off, we know that no matter what, no matter what, when these things happen, I will get water as one of my products. I must get water. If you think about it, notice what we're doing here too, is that I want all the ions to mix in. So you notice that actually, like for example, acids and bases, they're coming as an aqueous solution. So what I've done is I've stuck these acids and bases in some water and they've actually uh, dissociated into their ions to so they can react with each other so this is kind of important because your result actually ends up being like i'm saying salt here but it's aqueous salt it's actually going to be uh, the ions mixing around uh, within the water uh, and also creating some water on top of that now 
there is more to this. Um, you at some point are going to start talking about what's called equilibrium reactions. You're not doing it yet, so don't worry about it. Generally, what I'm creating is a salt. Generally. Uh, it won't always happen, but most of the time what we're going to talk about is that when we combine, I end up with a salt and water. That's what's going to happen. And also, just to mention here, my pH is now 7. This is why I call it, it is a neutral. Am I spelling neutral right? I don't know. Okay, I might have spelled that wrong. Oh, I keep mixing up the U and the E's. Anyway, I'm not teaching how to spell. Look it up once again. So, uh, this is basically how it sets up. So, if I see the acid base, you get yourself a little bit of an easier time trying to figure out the replacement, the double replacement reaction, because you know, you automatically know that you're going to get that water. You automatically know that that's what's coming next. So... Uh, do we have a balance? Do we have a balance? Well, let's go through it. Once again, what are the Mr. Gale rules? Mr. Gale rules for balancing stuff. Um, I am going to deal with what? Let's see what I got here. Stuff that's not HRO first. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. Chlorine. One chlorine. One chlorine. Cool. Sodium. Sodium's not HRO. Okay. Sodium. Sodium. All right. I got one and one. Everything's fine. Now, uh, next thing, H's. Uh, what do I got over here? I got an H here. I got an H here. That's two of them. And over here, I've got H2. Oh, okay. So that's fine too. And then lastly, I deal with the O. So I got one O here and one. Okay. So this is already balanced. That's lovely. So I don't have to worry about that one. Okay. We're down to pretty much almost one more thing, but sort of two. Okay. So let's do this. What do I got here? Well, let's keep going through the what I'm trying to observe here. I have a single thing. A single thing. And then I've got a compound with two things. Once again, don't forget, look at that. That's one thing. Polyatomic. I got a polyatomic ion. One thing. This is just one thing. Remember that. It's only one thing. So, once again, it's a compound with two things. Now, once again, if you think about it, since these are combining, my silver is going to be the positive. The NO3 is going to be the negative. Copper is naturally going to end up being a metal. Therefore, I mean, it's not saying it, but it's going to become a positive ion that's going to be able to combine. So, I know what will be replacing it is obvious because the copper would have to combine with the NO3, which means copper will be replacing the silver. What do I got here? I have single replacement reaction. I have to. This is all I got. It's, well, it's the last one. Sort of the last one. Notice we're going to have one last thing to talk about here. Special cases. So what do we got? Copper will go in and take the place of the uh, silver and... Uh, the silver will pop out. Notice we're putting solid copper into an aqueous solution of these two. So we're having some ions just kind of flying off of each other, replacing each other. So what should happen to the silver? Let's see what would happen. Uh, let's take it away. Oh, the silver comes out as a solid. So that's kind of neat. This is actually kind of cool. You put the copper in to a solution, the copper will disappear and out will precipitate silver. Interesting. Interesting. So what do we got now? Um, I don't know what to say about this one except, well, once again, you got to go back to your ta your periodic tables, figure out how what's the charge for each of your ions, and make sure you balance them out. So when you write them down, you're writing the correct formula. Now, this is before we're balancing, so just make that clear. We're not balancing yet. We're just simply making sure that we're writing down the correct formula for this compound, NO3 and copper. If we, we balance it out, I need two uh, NO3s to to be able to bake this whole thing balance. So let's go back. Boom. The scale's bouncing. What do we got? So let's go through it. Uh, first, the things that are not H's or O's first. Okay, so I got copper. I got one copper here. Everything's fine. I've got one silver. One silver. Everything's fine. I've got one nitrogen. I've got, wait a minute. This is two of these, which means I actually have two nitrogens. So I come over here and I have to give two nitrogens to balance them out. But wait a minute. 
that just gave me two silvers. So I got to come over here and give two silvers. Okay, so I'm balanced now. And the N's are balanced. And now what's left? Do the H's? No H's. Do the O's. Okay, so what do I got? Well, on this side, I've got O3, but now I've got two of them. So that means a total of six oxygens. Okay, I got six over here. How many I got? Well, I've got an NO3, but it's two of them, six of them. I'm good. I've balanced the whole thing. Hooray. So I, I don't know why this works so well, but doing it in this order, I highly recommend. It just seems to just everything washes out in the end. It's a beautiful thing. It's a great way of doing the balancing. So uh, I'm balanced. And of course, what am I saying? This is a single replacement, but special case. There is a special case. And this one is, once again, just like, if you remember, the special case of acid-base reactions or neutralization reactions. You're looking for specific stuff. So in the case of a double replacement special case of acid-base, you're looking for an acid and base reacting with each other. So what's going to happen in the case of the special case here? Well... This is going to take a moment to kind of make clear what's going on. I must have a, mo a molecule, or rather, uh, should, should I say molecule? Yeah, I'm going to say molecule. A molecule that has, that has, and it has to have this, carbon and hydrogen, has to have it. Um, Could, it could have... O also, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to have that, but it definitely needs to have carbons and hydrogens. So once again, I'm doing a single replacement. I've got this kind of big molecule here, and I've kind of cheated a little bit too, because notice it's not just a, a molecule of two things. This is this is not an ionic bonded thing. This is this is an organic. This is actually an organic molecule, covalently bonded together. So things are a little weird here. But mainly what you're looking for is a situation where you're dealing with a whole bunch of carbons and hydrogens mixed together, maybe some oxygens. And what is the single thing? This is, this is the single thing. But in this case, your single thing is always going to be oxygen. Why? Why? Because this is the last of the, of the things. And uh, what is it? It's it's burning. It's burn. It's it's lighting things on fire. This is all about fire. And so, um, what 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 exactly are we talking about here? We're talking about combustion. So you may have recalled from times I might have taught you that uh, when things, uh, for example, the Hindenburg. Uh, lit on fire it was combusting and the uh, and this was uh, uh, we're having a lot of fire and you might recall that a lot of the deaths uh, that were caused by the Hindenburg disaster was not from people literally being on fire but rather being boiled alive <laughs> very depressing um, boiled alive because, and this is really interesting, because once you know this is a combustion, I should write this down, I shouldn't just say burning here, hang on. This is combustion, combustion. Soon as I got burning going on, I know what the resulting products are going to be. I automatically know. So you don't even have to think. You just, you just have to write down on the next, on the right side of your equation, carbon dioxide and water okay carbon dioxide and water notice that everything produced is a gas now um, i did mention that people were being boiled alive and so clearly i can have uh, water vapor turn to liquid fairly quickly if the temperature drops even slightly below 100 degrees so uh, just so it's clear, this is the reaction. And this is the type of stuff that you're going to get. You're going to get gases produced. So no matter what, you will get carbon dioxide and dihydrin oxide, or rather, water. 
sorry, dihydrin monoxide. I should be, I should, monoxide. Oh my God, I should say this right. Di, dihydrogen monoxide. So, uh, water. Yeah, water. So in every case, now just remember, what do you got to look for? You have to look for uh, some sort of com uh, molecule that will have carbons and hydrogens in it at least. Okay, like I said, the oxygen in this case is not absolutely necessary. Um, and in a lot of cases, it won't be there. In this case, it is. I'm just picking something at random here. And I will always be combining with oxygen. So as soon as you see a single replacement and you go, wait a minute, it's adding oxygen specifically oxygen look over here and say am i dealing with carbon and hydrogens added to oxygen in that case i do have combustion i will produce automatically carbon dioxide and water so um, this is a good one to look at for uh, balancing because there's all sorts of fun stuff going on here so let's try to balance it and see how we do uh, what are the rules what are the rules do stuff that's not H or O first. Okay, so I'm dealing with my carbons. It's the only thing that's not H or O in this case. So I got six of them over here. I got one over here. All right, well, then I'm going to need six. Okay. Now, you're tempted to do the oxygens because you're like, oh, I got 20. Nope, leave it alone. Do the O last. Let's check out the hydrogens. Twelve of them here. Two here. I need six hydrogens. Six, sorry, six times two. I need 12 hydrogens over here. So I got to multiply this entire water by six. Six times two gives me 12. My hydrogens are balanced. Now let's work out the O's. Okay, I got six here. I got six here. I've got two here. That's a total of eight. What do I got here? I've got, well, clearly I got to do something over on this side. 12 here plus six here i've got 18. there's something else that kind of comes up sometimes you'll notice that if you have all these o2s and like o's here i got six times here i know that no matter what i have even or odd numbers so when, when you spot like an odd or even number like notice here six o's o2 there is no way it is impossible for to to have any kind of combination of numbers here that's going to get me an odd number. So just by knowing that over here, I notice I've got an O2 and an O. This O must be made even to get me a combination to make an even number. So I know that I, would, I was sooner or later going to have to multiply this over here by some number to make it an even number because I got 12 plus something. And it can't be 12 plus 1 because that would have been 13. And there's no way I can get 13 over here. So... Anyway, that's just a little aside for you to think about. Let's just look at this. I got 18. I got 8. I need I need 10 more. How do I do it? Well, I want to leave this well alone. Let's just bump this sucker up. So I need 6 plus what I need. It would be bit good if this was 6 plus 12 because then I get 18. So let's make this 12. I make 6. 6 times. Nice. So 6 times 2 gives me 12, plus another 6 gives me 18. I got 18 over here. 2, uh, 6, 12, 6, oh, 18. Everybody's happy. I can erase all this. Let me just wee, erase it all. And then I've got my happy, happy balanced equation. Hopefully, whoop, I shouldn't make that go away. I'll make this go away. And that's the last of the reactions. And that's a little bit of a few helpful hints of how to balance. And that should be everything you need to know for now. And uh, yeah, nice talking to you. Later.